Hello and welcome! It is a Friday night stream. Haven't had one of these in a little while. Thanks for coming down. And I want to start off by saying a big old thank you to our subscribers and our followers. We got some new peeps to welcome. And uh, first off, thank you to Teeth and Grave for the four month subscription. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, every little bit helps. I've got a couple other new subscribers last time. Thank you again to Amat Works and to Cumin for subscribing, as well as Beard Pills and uh, The Joy of Missing Out. Your support really means the world. I, uh, I'm just overjoyed to be able to do this with you guys. And if we hit 10 subscribers, then we are going to celebrate with a gaming stream. It's going to be awesome. Um... I am also going to welcome, we got a couple new followers. We got Colonel Dupes one hello and welcome. We got Punk Jacked Gods, and we got Mrs. X Soul Reaper, and the true king of space. Thank you all for joining us, and uh, just nice to have some more nerds in our friendly little gang here. Um, I know at least um, a few of you, f let's see, all of you guys are also streamers. So you should go and check them out. Colonel Dupes 1, Punk Jacked Gods, Mrs. X Soul Reaper, and the True King of Space all also do cool streams. You will see them on my About page. You can go and find them and follow them. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. We're going to have some fun tonight. Last time on the Radical D, we did some Halloween stuff. We made some music out of images, and that was exciting. Still planning to post that in the Discord. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Apologies. Life stuff gets in the way. Had to do a lot of work this week, but it's coming. Instructions on how to make your own cool glitch art, and you can try out some of the photos that we made and some of the photos we used. And uh, it's all free. Free software, open source. Just Audacity and GIMP is all you need to have a good time. Anyway, this week it's going to be back to the PS3 controller. Got it all hooked up this time. And uh, I've got my hat. This was originally just for Halloween, but I really like this hat. And I thought it would be kind of a shame to just wear it the one time. Um, so I think I'm just going to keep wearing it because I like it. <laughs> it's comfy and it gives me something to do when I'm waiting for things to load and uh, might as well just dub it my thinking cap so we've got our thinking cap on <laughs> let's get going so first thing I just want to open this patch up and show you guys something because if you remember the last time that we were fucking with this we made our ah yes we made our poly patch here into well, a poly patch. We made our sawtooth wave into a true polyphonic synthesizer, except we ran into this weird swarm of angry bees when we tried to use the detune knob. And on a whim, I figured that out between last stream and this one, and this was the only problem. What we were initially doing was, uh, let's open up this original patch. We're going to need this pretty soon anyway. So we have, yeah, super duper saw is what we want. And just to show you guys, this was the only problem. So we had an inlet here for poly tilde. Instead of normal inlets, we use this object in and we label them with one, two, whatever we want to put them in order. And then we were just connecting this inlet to our POC to change this deviate message, which is what makes the cool detune effect. But the problem is that that was only sending to whatever the current note is. So when I hit square, it's playing one note, and that would take one value from this inlet. But as soon as I played another one, it would still be using the old value and not getting the new one. So the way to do that, simple as pi, is actually just use a send and receive. So now we just have a float box here going to a send, S for send, that's called detune, and that is simultaneously sending it to every voice of poly tilde, and it's getting received here. And you can see them all. We've got 16 voices here that poly tilde is in charge of, and all of them will get detuned at once whenever we flip this, uh, this float box around. So let me show you what it sounds like, because it's fucking awesome. I couldn't believe this once I got it working. 
check this out. So let's go back to presentation mode. Then we're going to put something together to jam with here. Hey, JWP stream. What is up, Jay? Hello. Oh, I'm glad you're here. That's okay about missing my streams. Dude, I'm always here. I'm just building shit. It's nice to have people around whenever you are. Drop in whenever you are free. I have a thinking cap now. <laughs> in case you missed the Halloween stream. Um, but yeah, we've got a polysynth happening. I'm going to turn toggle mode on. And uh, yeah, check this shit out. Oop, toggle mode's that button. And now when I change this float, here, let's make this a little quieter, actually, because I don't want to blow y'all. <laughs> blow your speakers. Oh, DSP are rare streamers, says Jay. Yes, we are a rare, very tiny niche. <laughs> tiny little niche. <laughs> But it's all good. It's a friendly niche. So yeah, turn this box up. Detuning. Sounds nice, right? Pretty sweet. You can keep turning it up. Still just a nice, detuned, multi-channel sawtooth wave. Yeah, still sounds good in this range. I'm trying to think what range is going to be good for this, right? And, uh... So we're up at two now. We know that still sounds good. Starting to get a little more detuned. Ah, it's a rabbit hole niche. Thank you, Jay. Yes, that's perfect. Welcome to the rabbit hole. That's what we're going to call it now, I think, chat. Welcome to the rabbit hole. <laughs> so we're at eight. Still, sounds a little weird, but still good, right? Now we're at a hundred. I don't know if you'd call this good, but it's a thing. 200. Still functioning. Not being, you know, super musical, but it works. Let's keep going. 339. Um, this is... I'm not sure what this is, honestly. I'll show you what it's being sent to. We can take a look at the uh, help file. It's going to control... Um, MC saw tilde, so it's detuning 16 sawtooth waves. I guess probably sense is a good guess. But check it out, it gets even bigger. We're up to a thousand now. 1300? It doesn't die, it just keeps going. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it must be hitting aliasing, but it kind of eventually starts to sound like FM. Yeah, that's some wild ass shit, right? I don't have synthesizers that do that. <laughs> but back to zero and we're normal, right? <laughs> Jay says, Follow following equal temperament within the range of sense makes detuning sound best. Yes, if you want it to sound musical, that is a good rule of thumb. But that is a big if. The general goal of this synthesizer is we want to make kind of wacky psych rock sounds. So, I don't know. I kind of, I want to use the huge range of it. Um, but yes, no, so uh, Jay says, so notes translated to sense. 12 over 100. A hundred cents is, uh, is one semitone, if I recall correctly. Um, so, I, hmm, I don't think it's cents then. Um, let me play another note. Or two. Worse with negatives, too. It is mathy. <laughs> That's okay, math is nothing to be scared of. Math is something you can figure out, and uh, a lot of people have had some shitty math teachers, but it's not something to be afraid of. You can figure it out. But yeah, so at one, you're already getting some detuning. That could be a cent, I guess. Let's see what 12 sounds like. 12 is already a lot. So, yeah. Jay says, try 70, that's a fifth. But in cents, it's different. Sure, let's try 70. So that's zero again. 70. Well, we'll see what the help file says. Maybe it has some answers for us. Let's 
stop this for a second. Then we're going to make something to jam with. And then we're going to break this out and try adding some stuff to it. I want to add... I think I want to add a filter today is my goal. I want to kind of mix this with some filtered noise. And uh, let's see. Jay says, yeah, I think maybe seven. Well, seven semitones is a, is a fifth. Um, so yeah, let's see what this says. This is the object we're using. MC saw tilde. Let's get into the help. So what does it say about the, uh, so deviate is the message that we're using. This is the bit of the patch that's making that fucking whack ass sound. Into MC saw tilde on the left here, we are sending the message deviate with two numbers after it, two floats. The one on the left is the detune amount. Um, that's just what I've called it, but it's the number we've been playing around with. And the number on the right is the frequency for the actual bass sawtooth wave. So we're sending that MIDI notes and converting those to frequency. Um, so what does deviate do? Where is it in here? Anti-aliasing, oscillator sync, basic, not mentioned in here. Hmm. See also messages. <laughs> you know, it's not mentioned here. Am I missing something, chat? Uh, I under messages I see int float signal sync trig. Did we find a cool little Easter egg? I got this. Uh, I got the deviate message from a tutorial that we watched together. Um, Jay says, okay, so I think the number is the frequency domain. That's hard to translate to pitch or scent. Um, well, we're using the handy MTOF, MIDI to frequency object, to translate MIDI notes into frequency, into hertz. Um, so that's setting our bass amount. It's possible that the D V eight is also doing hertz. Um... That sounds like maybe what we're hearing. So it's maybe fluctuating up and down by however many hertz we send it. Um, honestly, your guess is as good as mine. Hit my Discord up if you have the answer. I don't know what Deviate does. It's not in the fucking help file. <laughs> so that's new to me. Um, I found, as I said, I found it in a tutorial. I'll drop it in the learning resources if any of you guys are interested in it. We followed it together in a previous stream. Um, but you know what? Fuck it. It works. <laughs> Punk rock. I don't hardly care. <laughs> or no, I do care. But we'll figure it out later. Right now I want to make sounds. <laughs> so let's see. We've got... We're going to come back to this patch. So I'm going to leave it open. We're still making sound here. And yeah, now let's... Take a quick little detour away from the patching and make something that we can play along to. I think it's a really good idea when you're programming, if you can. Um, an old teacher of mine used to talk about, always have that extra cup of coffee. When you're done and you've made something work, take an extra cup of coffee to make it musical. Spend the extra time to not just go like, okay, cool, it works but actually make something with it. So I'm going to open up Reason here and make something maybe a little little Boards of Canada-ish or something. We'll see what we get. Jay says, uh, yep, it always sounds different for every note because the harmonics are following a linear relation opposed to a logarithmic one. Yes, that is true. And Jay says, I'm from SynthEdit, so I don't know deviate, just the DSP logic. That's awesome. I mean, the DSP logic is what's at the root of it all. All right, reason. Let's put you in here. I'm gonna open me up, uh, Doctor Octorex, and I'm gonna find me a loop. I think that's what we're gonna do. Um. <laughs> loop supply. Dr. Octorex patches. Vintage. 
Let's see what some of these sound like. Rustic. I like the sound of that. Meh. Cool. That was not bad. Sepia. Kind of dig that. Let's, let's see what we get with that. So this is kind of a fun way that I like to screw around with chopping up beats. Um gonna drag this guy over into our MIDI track. I'm gonna turn off enable loop playback and now we have this MIDI track here that will play the Octorex for us at the correct tempo. Let's make it a little faster. Sweet. And now what we can do Let's copy that. We'll leave the original alone. And uh, let's chop this up a bit. So it sounds like we got a snare drum. in here somewhere. Hmm, hold up. Oh, did I open the... I think I opened the effect by accident. <laughs> I'm surprised that worked. My bad, chat. Hold on. Let's get rid of this for a moment. Let's remember which loop this was. It was Loop Supply, Octorex, Vintage, CW3... Sepia. All right. So I accidentally opened up the one that's an audio effect. We want this guy. And uh, Jay says, you use completely different tools than I do. I was off base, except music. <laughs> oh, that's all good, man. No, I mean, that's part of the fun of this is uh, we all use different tools. So we all have things we can learn from each other. I'm sure there's plenty I could learn from you as well. Um, so let me get rid of these. I have more tools than I know what to do with. I can't find half of them sometimes. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to go back to Loop Supply Vintage. And we were using... Where to go? Sepia. Yeah, we want the full one. Drag it in here. Stop. Turn off enable loop playback. And now we just drag this over and we have our chopped up track. All right, cool. That's better. Now if I mess with this. Awesome. So yeah. Now it's reacting to what I do in this MIDI clip. So let's take these, put them down here. Let's repeat that. That's good. And now I'm going to cut this out. Let's repeat this. Maybe just do one snare drum or put it closer. Mm, just the one. Take some of these hi-hats, scoot them over. No Siri, go away. The trick here is to find some MIDI notes that do nice things together. Oh, that's cool. Alright, 
Cool, so that's one bar, or two bars rather. Let's duplicate this. And, uh... oh, I don't know. Let's see what happens when we reverse it here. Maybe just in the middle. Make ourselves a beat here. Yeah, I can work with that. Awesome. Let's throw some effects on it. Let's also make it a little faster. Make it even more lo-fi here. Sweet. We even throw, uh, let's get a little crazy as Bob Ross says. Let's throw a, hmm, what am I looking for? Give me a sec, chat. Collect my brain. I need my thinking cap. <laughs> Not in reverb. Not here. Uh, no. Ah, derp. It's literally the first one. Give me some beat repeat. Nice. Dig it. And let's do just some regular delay for the fuck of it. less feedback and let's jump in here and let's open this up nice play with this filter a bit Let's try going down an octave. I think I like it where it was. Make it a little faster. A little less chance, a little different grid here. We got a little beat happening there. Let's add some bass to it. Um, what shall we use for bass? Let's go with... Hmm. Bass, bass, bass. Teeth engraved. Tape distort the down an octave one. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. Let's see. Tape. Hey, Teeth Engraved, where does tape live? Is it baby audio? I found it, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Turn up the drive. Let's try taking the Redux back off. Let's try it down an octave again. Fuck yeah. Oh yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> love it love it let's add some like normal drums to this too um I think I want native instruments contact And let's do some Butch Vig drums. Get heavy with this shit. My favorite is the candy ass drums here. 
Let's do like a halftime feel. I feel like that's, uh, is it C3? Nope, that's up. Symbols, C1. There it is. There's our snare. Sick. Add some hi hats here. Add some cymbal every couple of bars. Those run off the SSDs, you might need to resample them. Yep, well, I'll probably just keep it to the one track. We'll see how it goes. But thank you, yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. We got a beat here. Now we need us uh, some bass. Hey, Teeth and Grave, does Monarch live in Massive or Massive X? Jay says, that hits like a semi-truck. Hell yeah, that's how we do it here. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Reactor. I was wrong on both counts. Thank you. <laughs> See what I mean? There's too many tools. I can't remember what anything is sometimes. <laughs> Let's see. Play instruments. Turn that guy up. Yeah, let's use that. What's a good key to be in today, chat? What shall we do? I think a minor key. Let's do... Let's do D minor. According to Spinal Tap, that is the saddest of all keys. Though I'm feeling pretty happy right about now, really. Down and off. Duplicate again. Let's do deep Phrygian. mess with the sound a little bit. Give it some give it some decay here. I kind of want a long sound with a quick attack. So we got filter envelope, amplitude. Yeah, alright. Let's give it a bit of a filter envelope too. Jay says, what is, uh, <laughs> Jay says, what is this music? Your personality is happy, but you're making some heavy industrial. Yep, that's me. Bunny hat, heavy industrial. 
<laughs> yeah, that sounded better. Fuck yeah. Alright. I wonder. Let's get really heavy here. Harry King signature app. Go. Yeah. All right. The beast. Fuck yeah, let's go. Cool. All right, that's a jam. Fuck yeah, let's do it. Oh, Teeth and Graves says, kind of sounds like download, skinny puppy side project. Oh yeah, I like download. Thank you. We need just a couple more attacks here. Let's do like... Yeah. All right. Yeah, something like that works for me. Duplicate the whole thing. Faded again. And now we can come back to our synth here and kind of have some context to mess with it. Let's see, so we're now in Phrygian, not Aeolian. Yeah. All right. Can we put some effects on this? Needs delay and reverb. We can. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Jay says, I want to say choir, but you still have your sin. Once you detune it, it won't matter. <laughs> Lol. Yeah, my thinking exactly. No, I was kind of hearing a choir y part. I considered Mellotron or something, but this is filling that frequency range. That's wanted some bass and drums to go with it just for that reason. Down and off. Nice. jam here. I'm gonna hit save because I don't want to have to redo all of that. Jamming. All right. So now there's a few things I want to do with this patch. One of which is I want to throw a filter in here and one I have in mind is SVF tilde. So this has a cool little thing to it. We're going to put some noise through it. We're also going to put our detune sawtooth through here. And, uh, oh, sorry, Jay says, I mean, for the key, the detuner is broken. It'll probably produce a metallic quality for some note, assuming you detune. Yep, that is totally okay. I like some, some weird detuned metallic sounds. That's all good. So let's see. Uh... SVF tilde does some nice stuff with resonance where you can send a frequency and have it self-oscillate in a way that's pretty musical. Um, 
Let me make sure I'm sending this to the right audio output so we can hear. Because what I'd ideally like to do here, here's the goal chat. I want to be able to do some shit with the joysticks where we are controlling the resonance on this filter and the frequency on it um, while we are playing notes with the buttons. But we can also control, it might be neat to control the frequency of the filter if it's resonating with the notes is what I'm thinking. So let me think for a second. Yeah, we're going out to black hole. So you guys should hear this. Yep, there's some filtered noise. Wonderful. So let's play around with this for a quick old second. So there's playing with the frequency here. And here's the resonance. And it starts to make a tone. Yeah, that's a pretty good, good amount. What is this object here? Slider. Okay, cool. A little jumpy, but we can add some smoothing to that. And SVF gives you a choice, I believe. We want a low-pass filter, but you have four inlets available here, which is kind of neat for them. I think that's what these do. Yep, so left here is the low pass output, that's what we want. High pass, band pass, notch output. But yeah, low pass is going to give us that kind of standard swooshy sound that we're looking for. Uh, if you guys have ever heard Hawkwind, this is kind of what we're trying to emulate, but with our own little twist on it. Um, so we got some noise going through here, and kind of what I'm thinking is, let's grab another MTOF object. Put that in here. And let's grab a K slider. So we've got MIDI to frequency here. And let's see, what else do I want? Oh yes, I want some smoothing. So I want a line, generate a timed ramp. Do we want the audio rate one, line tilde? No, I think we just want a regular old line. And then we would want a dollar sign one for a changeable argument with, let's give it a good, like, 500 milliseconds of smoothing. I think that should do it. We probably want, yeah, initial rain. Let's just see what this does by itself for a second. Shush. I just want some smoothing here, that's all I want. I'll try with a float. On a momento. Throw another float in here. So if I go to 50, yep, okay. Go to 100, yep, there we go. Let's give it maybe a thousand. I think that'll sound nice. So that's a thousand milliseconds for one second. Let's plug that into the frequency, the center frequency. And our MIDI to frequency goes in here. So we're gonna get Whatever frequency is the note we play, and then it'll get smoothed to the next one, and we should be able to kind of play this filter. Nice. Sweet. Let's give it a little more resonance. Yeah, so at about 90. Nice. Maybe a little less on the smoothing. Let's try 800. A little under a second. Sweet. Yeah, that's kind of doing what I want. Awesome. So our arguments are an initial center frequency. Doesn't really matter, we're going to be playing that ourselves. And then a resonance, 
we're also going to be playing that. But yeah, let's just, this is sort of the core of what I want here. Let's take this and this. Let's copy it. And we're probably going to actually want a nice times tilde here as well. And we're going to see if it works inside of poly tilde. Let's move this up and out of our way here. Now, my question to myself and to you, I suppose, is do we want this inside of our poly tilde patch? Yes, we probably do, because we want to be able to play multiple notes as, at once, whether it's a sawtooth or filtered noise. So, this noise is just going to be making noise until we tell it not to. So we need this to also be connected up to our envelope. So I'm going to take this same ADSR tilde object we're using up here and connect it to this times tilde object. I'm going to give this an initial starting resonance of 0.9. So it's pretty resonant. We can hear our notes. So that should give us noise through the filter. And that will be, let's put this here. We don't need this print anymore. And so we got noise through a filter into our envelope here. This is gonna go and get mixed with our sawtooth. Sure, let's deal with that first. I think initially we just want to add these two signals together. It would be nice to be able to kind of mix between them, I think. But for right now, let's try just mixing them and see what it sounds like. So we would want a plus tilde to add two signals together. Is there an MC version of that? There is. Hmm. Add signals multi-channel. That might be what we want. Because this is a multi-channel object. Okay. Let's try that first. So we're going to take our output of our sawtooth here. Patch that into the output of poly tilde. We're going to take the output of our noise and put it in here. We have a gain slider after this, so we can control how loud this is. All right, so we have our output put together. Now we need our input. Let's make a send here for our resonance. Rather, we need a receive here. Then we're going to need a send in a second, because we want to send this to all of the instances of poly tilde. I don't know why there's two F float boxes here. We don't need that. Now what we need is to be able to send our notes to this MIDI to frequency box. And we're getting that. Here's our other MIDI to frequency box. So we would want to take this from the same place. That should plug it straight into our PS3 notes. I think that works. Let's go over it once the whole way through. So. PS3 notes come in here. They go either, well, both, over to our sawtooth on the left, and they also go over to MIDI to frequency. They get converted. We go through a ramp. We don't do anything with this float box, whatever. It goes into our filter. We've got noise going in on the left. We've got resonance being controlled here but it's going to default to 0.9, so that's fine. We should hear it. And our time tilde starts at zero. That's good. We don't want it to always be on, but our envelope that's getting controlled by velocity from our PS3 controller is going to be creating a swell of noise to go with our sawtooth. I think that should work, but I'm paranoid, so I'm going to save this as super duper saw two, or maybe something more descriptive. Let's say super duper saw noise. 
Okay. Now we're going to close this because we're done with it. We are going to open this guy up and change over this poly tilde. All right, chat, time to cross your fingers. So we now want this new version of the patch, Super Duper Saw Noise. All right, no error messages. Everything's still hooked up. Looks good to me. We're not going to control resonance quite yet. We'll do that after we know things work. Save. Close. Leave that up because we probably want to come back to it. Squeeze the hat for good luck. And uh, <laughs> Jay says, does Max DSP crash often? Funny you should mention that. We should cross our fingers. But no, it doesn't really. Not not all the time. It is a bit of a strain when I'm running uh, Streamlabs at the same time, as well as running a bunch of sample libraries off of an SSD drive. So, you know, shit happens. But we're going to see how this goes. <laughs> um, might want to reopen this. Just to make sure things are, you know, happy. <laughs> so let's go over to Max for Live. Silver Machine 3. Drop it in here. Select our controller. We were in D Phrygian. All right, chat. What do you think? Is it going to work? Let's come up a couple octaves. So if things are working... And this is a good programming technique, by the way. When you're about to test something, have a good idea in your mind of what you expect it to do. And if you're feeling particularly ambitious, ways in which it could fail. So what we're expecting right now is when I hit a note, we should hear both the sawtooth and our filtered noise. Um, if we don't hear one, then it's probably either it's not getting notes or it's not outputting for some reason. And we'll go in there and look. But let's hope for the best. We're going to need a little gain. And... Okay. Well, we hear sound. That's a good start. Neat. It's a little hard to tell if there's noise in there. So we might just need to balance the two of them. That's fine. Okay, so we're on the right track. We didn't break anything. I don't think. So if we want to balance these, we need to uh, have, let's see. I bet there's probably a nice clean way to do this. Missing the noise? Yeah, I'm thinking that it's there, but we're not hearing it with, like, there's 16 sawtooth waves going at once and only one noise. So, a little hard to tell. Let's try temporarily disconnecting our, uh, our sawtooth stuff and just putting this directly in the output. See what we hear. That's probably a good way to debug this. Save. And... Reload this. So here we should see, we should hear just the noise. So we need a scale. We need a note. We need some gain. Oh, we need to select the controller. Derp. Okay, there's a little bit there. It's kind of quiet. Okay, so it is there. It was just quiet. Nice. Interesting. Hold on. We're getting other stuff with it. Okay, so that's the envelope shaking, uh, shaping it. Let's come up an octave. Interesting. There's kind of a click. I don't hate it, but there is a click. Let's turn it up a little bit. 
come up another octave. It's doing the ramp. It is tracking my notes. Interesting. Coming up another couple octaves. That's working. Okay. Nice. It is key tracking. All right, so that's, that's a good start. It's doing stuff. <laughs> it is key tracking, it is ramping, it is making sound. Maybe we were so low it was clicking. Because now that I'm in the higher octave, it seems like it is behaving. Um, Jay says, which part of the SVF do you have outputted? Good question. Band pass? Um, it should be low pass. Um, at least that's what I meant to. Let's take a look. Uh, yep, low pass. So let's make a send for our resonant so that we can control that. And... Let me see. And let's connect our, uh, let's connect our sawtooth back up. And we're probably just going to have to control the gain on these a little bit. So we'll do this manually for now, and eventually we can use a joystick to actually crossfade these. So let's say we're going to need a multi-channel times tilde. Started at one. Actually, I'll default this to a little lower than one. Let's make it, since this was way louder than our noise, let's default this to 0.8. But I'm going to make a receive here. Um, this just wants a signal or a float. Does it care if it's a signal or just a float? Let's see. No, it doesn't seem to care. All right, so let's do, let's just do a receive here. So we want to call this um, saw gain. Let's do that. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna do a, just a regular, another times tilde, because this one is for our envelope. That's gonna come in here. Let's default this to one. Yep, because this is going to be zero. So with the because of our envelope, it's not going to immediately make sound. So we're safe to leave this at a default of one. We want it to be louder than the saws. So I'm going to just plug this straight into the output. Um, and let's do another receive here. This one is going to be receive noise gain. All right, straighten that out. Keep things tidy. And then I think we're very close to being able to jam with this a bit. So we are gonna wanna control these three dudes. I'm gonna copy them, I'm gonna save this. And Jay says the click might be coming from DC offset. Oh yeah, that is a good thought. Hmm. DC offset is one of those things that I have not had to deal with very much. Um, if you would like to suggest a way around that, then feel free. It seems like it's dependent on uh, what frequency I'm at. So, Because as we came up into the higher octaves, it sounded fine, I thought. Um, I feel like there's a couple of max objects for dealing with DC, but it's been years since I've had to use them and I can't remember what they're called. So feel free to suggest if you know of one. But if not, it's all good. We're just going to do what we can with what we've got. So we've got our th two gains. Let's make that ascend. Make all of these ascend. And we will certainly be coming back to investigating that weird click. But 
We are just chipping away at this, little by little. That will be a project for another night, I think. So let's make a couple of floats here. Connect those up. And now we need some labels. So this is Detune. This is... This is much easier to read. There, let's use live.comment. All right, so we got our detune. We've got our saw. We've got our noise. We've got our resonance. Let's add these to presentation. Zoom these up here. And let's see, where am I going to put these? Let's bring this up a little bit, make it smaller. We don't need this to take up quite so much screen real estate. Yeah, nice happy little keyboard. You can be right here. So let's put these here. This is just temporary, so we'll do what we can. And Jay says, <laughs> You're sending a whole range of noise harmonics by using a low pass. As you raise the key, follow as you raise the key, follow your only opening as you raise the key follow, you're only opening more low noise. In order to get something musical in the noise, you'll probably have to use a band pass or a high pass key following the SVF with space. Well, we will see what we see with that. I think that the low pass was giving us a pretty good note once we turned the resonance up, but we can always try the uh, band pass or the high pass as well. We'll see what we like. My reasoning for using a band pass, I mean a low pass, sorry, <laughs> is that um, I might want to also be sending the saw through it, though we might use a separate filter for that. We will see. So let's do... Let's put noise and resonance together, right here, meh, and saw here, let's grab that little detune comment, put that in presentation as well, you come up here, way up here, okay. Sure, whatever. Let's try that. Save. Close. Reopen. And we'll see what that does. Select the controller. Select our key. Up a couple octaves. And turn up the gain a bit. We can leave detune alone. I'm going to put resonance at 0.95. And then we can slowly turn up the gain on the saw and the noise. Right, we had some default values in there. So let's make the saw zero for a sec. There's noise. All right. All right, so that's one for the noise. Nice. I like 0.95 resonance. Let's give it a bit more gain. Hey, look at that. Flipping a little bit. That's all right. Nice. <laughs> That's interesting. Awesome. 
And uh, Jace is thinking about a high pass following the SVF low pass is just a high pass. DSP is fun. I mean, it's just a BP. Yeah, it is just a just a band pass. Um, yeah, we might want to try a band pass. We'll see. But this is sounding pretty musical. I'm happy with it. Let's add some more of the saw in. We want to balance these. So the tricky thing is that we have 16 sawtooth waves, but we're not using a multi-channel noise thing. We just have one channel of noise. There we go. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Detune those a little. Flipping. All right, let's get brutal again. Hey, neat. All right. Jay says, I can tell what you're going for. You're peak shelving the noise at the top of the higher end of the LP. Yeah. We're kind of just playing the resonance here. Everything else is indeed louder than this, but I'm going to do, let's go here and let's go grab some more distortion. <laughs> there are those who say that the D in Radical D might be for distortion. <laughs> More distortion. Hell yeah. Now we're talking. Fuck yeah. 
That is a good time. That is coming along. So, Jay, let me catch up with you here. One second. Um, but da 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 So adding a high pass following the SVF LP isn't just a BP because you're peaking with resonance. Right. Adding the HP will clean up the signal, however, it has a key to follow. Yeah, we could, um, you could add a high pass after that and have it follow the key if you wanted to. But you could also just use an EQ afterwards to clean it up if you wanted to. Um, Jay says, I guess if you distort it, it kind of becomes dynamic. <laughs> More grunge in the higher octaves. Yeah, I enjoy it with the distortion. That was sounding pretty fun. I think next time, the mission is going to be to hook up the joysticks to be able to do the things that these little number boxes are doing in a more dynamic way. But this was fun. <laughs> I think this is a good stopping point. We've made some progress. We've added a cool little filter. The thinking cap approves. And uh, yeah, I think let's go raid somebody and call that a stopping point. Thank you for coming by. And uh, it was really pleasant to have the company. Nice to chat with you about DSP stuff, Jay. You should come hang out in the Discord. There's lots of other people who chat about DSP stuff there too. And we share tutorials and things. And uh, yeah, like-minded nerds. Oh, dude. Jay says, thanks for the brain twisters. Thank you for the brain twisters. I'm going to look into the uh, the DC offset for that uh, that click we were hearing. I suspect you're right about that. It's either that or it could just be... I've noticed I have to hit the up octave button a couple of times when we start playing um, because we're just defaulting to an octave of zero. And that might be what is... Like, it's too low. It's too low, so it's just making a click, is my guess. Uh, Jay says, to remove DC offset, you just have to cut it two hertz. Okay, yeah, we could do that. Um, awesome. Yeah, that'll be a mission for next time. And your Discord command isn't working because I haven't set up Nightbot yet because I'm still new at this. But if you go to my About section, there's a link there that you can click and it'll take you straight over. Uh, just click the little checkbox that says you accept the rules and the only rules are be nice to each other and be cool to beginners. That's it. Be excellent to each other. Let's go raid somebody. Who is on... Oh, the true king of space. He just joined our Discord. Let's go raid him. Doing some retro games, it looks like. Rockin'. Well, happy Friday night, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Say goodbye to my thinking cap. Until next week. Preparing to raid Yar. Let's go. Bye, guys. <laughs>